Facebook. Um, I thought, I know I said I wasn't going to come on today, but I figured, yeah, I'm going to come on today. Um, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Um, I just want to tell you that I don't know when this COVID storm will be over, but we will be coming up better for it. Sometimes when we're going through storms, we can't see our way through. But the Lord wants me to tell you today, you will be coming out brighter and better for it. And this will pass. Um, and as I was thinking about it, I was thinking about um, what Jesus had to go through and all the rejection and everything that he had to face. Um, and he always kept strong because he knew his father would get him through. Even on his last, um, uh, even with his la last breath, he said, into your hands I commit my spirit, which means my spirit is yours. Um, a lot of times we just, um, we neglect to remember that our spirits never die. Um, they never, um, they never wither, they never f fade they just transition and um and our spirit belong to god and and the only way you can keep your spirit strong is by feeding yourself the word of god is by meditating on um the word of god and what he says about you um and the spirit, unlike the soul or the body, is resilient. So in this time of uncertainty, of trials, don't forget to feed your spirit. Um, and all, like, and all the, and set rules for yourself of, how much of this uh, COVID-19 stuff you take in? Like I keep saying over and over again, it's important to be prepared, but it's also important not to panic. I was looking at some people today and I was like saying, wow, they're panicking. They're totally losing their minds. I know this is serious. I know that people are dying from this. I know we need to be careful and cautious. But children of the Most High God, we do not need to lose our minds over this. God will get us through it. Our spirit is resilient and we will come out better. We will come out greater. We will come out uh, with a more resilient spirit than we had when when um, we went in. Sometimes the world has never um, seen a storm like this because it it it's it kind of speaks to the fact that the Lord wants to do something totally great. It's almost like. Um, this is only my hypothesis, that he's shaking us up to bring the, the greater out of us. Like, um, I think of, uh, now I don't drink or whatever, but I think of old, old school wine making where they have to stamp, stamp on the grapes, grapes to get the juice out of it. And after they get the juice out of it, they have to let it sit in special barrels 
and ferment for a while. So, um, the wine, the the alcohol comes out and produces um, the wine. And different grapes produce different wine. Different people produce different things. I heard Stephen Furtick say something awesome the other day. He said, we're going through the same storm, but we're not in the same boat. And people, like, see, we're all going through COVID-19, but it's not hitting us the same way. Some, some people, it's hitting medically, whether they've been diagnosed or whether their friends or family members or grandmothers or grandpas have been diagnosed with COVID-19 or um, it's hitting them financially, whether they've lost their jobs, whether they've had to fire people, restructure companies, take things online, whether they've had to um, limit their grocery shopping, whether they've had to, whether they usually go out every day and now they can't go out at all. It has affected us in so many ways, but all in, in different ways. And because we're different people, um, this season will produce a different glory in, in all of us. See, the glory it will produce in you won't be the glory in me because we're different people. We have different stuff that the Lord is working on us with, with us on. And, but in every person, that COVID is go um, is hitting every person around the world. If they let it, it will either crush them or create something new. So, are you going to let COVID crush you or create something new in you? Is this going to be a time of innovation where you have to um, really? Um, know how you're going to um, talk to your kids about difficult things or um, the game that you're going to play for you with your kids or the um, curriculum you're going to send uh, with your kids or you know the fact that you need to talk to your family more Maybe this COVID-19 will foster more Facebook chats or more uh, Zoom chats. It will create something new in you. And it will definitely create something new for the World, World Health Organization. Um, because we, uh, I heard uh, Craig Groeschel say, in a crisis, we know what we don't have. We realize what we're lacking. We realize what we're missing. And this COVID-19 thing totally um, woke up the world to the fact that, hey, we're missing some things for emergencies. We're missing a protocol. If something hits one part of the world, we need to figure out how not to let it spread. We need to have certain protocols in place where we, where we prevent people from leaving or shutting down uh, that particular place until it gets handled there. We need to stop people at the airport or whatever. Like, I see new protocols um, for not only traveling, but in the way we handle 
um, pandemics like this. I see new um, pandemic planning things coming into uh, place because our pandemic planning things from before were very uh, location based. Like if it happens in this location, we'll go here. If we run out of food for, for a week, we'll, we'll stock up on food for at least two weeks. We'll do, we'll do that. All of that is almost out the window now because I think it's been about three weeks um, since we've all been really aware of what's going on here. And for what they were telling us before this hit, if we listened to that advice, we would be running out of food right now because two weeks is almost up and then what do we do? We have to go out and buy groceries. So I think it will leave the world after this pandemic more prepared and more able to handle. And I think not only the health organizations or the pandemic planning organizations, but I think the food industry will put things into place uh, so that people don't run out of food. Um, people uh, can get their their food at a regular uh, supply and shelves are not empty. I think things will be put into place so that if a pandemic like this happens again, we'd be more prepared to handle it and take control. A lot of times when issues crop up, it, it lets you know what you physically need, what you emotionally need, what you spiritually need. Because when things are going all right, you feel that everything is okay, so you don't need anything. But when things start to go wrong, you see the holes in your life. And you see what it will take to build them. So I think, um, although this situation is awful, and it's, um, it's very hectic, I see bright spots coming from this. I see a world that is more prepared and more together and more just prepared for anything. We're coming out of this stronger, better, more loving, more appreciative of our family members. I know at most churches I've been to, uh, pastors say, touch your neighbor and say this, hug your neighbor and we're hugging and we're loving and we're whatever. And we used to, I used to take that for granted. I'd be like, oh, they're hugging again. Oh, they're whatever again, but not anymore. I think that the body of Christ will, will, not only not take that for granted, but I think when we're allowed to hug and touch again, when the band, when the shelter in place bands have been lifted or when the stay home bands have been lifted, um, I don't think we'll want to let each other go because we all know what it feels like to not to be able to hug to hold, to go outside. Because when you have something there, it's always there. But when it gets taken away, you understand what it looks like when, when it's gone. And I think this COVID-19 is horrible as it is. It's really teaching us things. I think the Lord is really using this uh, for his glory. Now, he didn't send it 
but I think he's using it for his glory. And he wants us to be strengthened. He wants us to know that he is still God and he is still in control and he loves us so much. And all he wants you to do right now is lean into him. I know it's tough. I know it's a struggle, but he is there and he loves you so much, beloved. And he sent me to tell you that you are important. Look past what you see. Look past what you see. Like I said yesterday or the day before, look at the miracles that he's got for you. Um, there are, there's a song, um, that I think it's by Emmy Sky. It's called Ordinary Miracles, where she talks about, um, looking at the ordinary miracles of life. So, look past what you see to what you know. What do you know? Well, one thing I know is that Jesus is real. He will always be with me. And this storm of COVID-19 is not forever. And it's going to change the world for the better. It, God's going to use it to change the world for the better. He's already using it to bring churches together to uh, cause churches to be innovative, to cause people to just love each other a little bit more and take care of each other. I've heard of very few murders and stabbings and all that in this time. We seem to be a lot more kinder to each other and the little miracles that I've seen, it's phenomenal. And it doesn't negate the horribleness of what's going on. But if you change your perspective, you can look at it more um, positively. The situation is not, is not positive at all. But it's not, it's not all the way bleak either. God is using this mess mess to bring forth his message. And his message is of love and of grace and of peace. He comes to bring you peace today. He comes to bring you joy today. He comes to bring you gladness. He wants to turn your life upside down for the good. And those of you who are struggling with job loss today, I pray that God provide for you. I pray that God speak to you, give you innovative ideas. Um, maybe how to take your business online or innovative ideas of how to, how to um, bring income in. And he knows what you're feeling. He knows that it isn't easy. He never said it would be easy, but he said that he'd be with us in it. He said, um, he said, take heart. I've overcome the world. He said, in this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. And he'll be with us right to the end of COVID, to the other side. And when we get to the other side, we'll be, it'll be so bright and it'll be, it'll, we will rejoice. We will get through this. We will see the other side. 
Father, I pray for all your precious people out there. Comfort them, bring peace, um, bring love, bring whatever they need, bring groceries, bring jobs, bring whatever they need. Lord God, you said your Father, which is in heaven, will supply all of your needs according to your glorious riches. So we stand on the promises of God. We believe that the promises of God are yes and amen. And we believe no matter what the circumstances, your word is true. Help us to stand to your word. Help us to stand on your promises in this time of uncertainty, Lord God. We praise you. We lift you up in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. See you Sunday. I'm going to take a break t tomorrow. But I'll see you on Sunday on Facebook. And we'll be joining YouTube as well on Sunday. I've decided that both doing both sermons, doing both websites all the time was a little hard for me. So I'm, because the majority of my uh, sermon watchers are on YouTube, I'm going to do YouTube, but I'm going to do Facebook, sorry. Majority of my watchers are on Facebook, so I'm going to do Facebook uh, for the um, for the week things, and I'm going to do YouTube for Story Time Sunday, just until this is over, um, just until COVID is over, and I can get back to my regular Saturday schedule. I was just finding it a bit too much to try and control both by myself at the same time. Um, okay, so, bye, I'll see you on Sunday, Facebook, for Story Time on Sunday, and we'll be joined by YouTube. Bye.